YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got this new F-16 Falcon 80 millimeter EDF jet. Check this out. Awesome retracts. This is our third flight. We got a little bit of wind running down the runway, which is just ideal for this sort of plane. Look how sturdy they are. Nice, and we've got the sun setting, so it's gonna be great for for the lighting, like this effect, it's so cool. By the way, bright daylight, you can still see the LEDs. Look at the LEDs on the wingtips, top and bottom. Mm -hmm. Full ordnance pack comes with this. Even in the ARF Plus, this is the bind and fly. So if you're buying the ARF Plus, okay, give me just a second, I'm gonna put this down. If you're buying the ARF Plus, then you're gonna get everything but the EDF uh, fan and electronic speed control. So you, everything else comes in it, the retracts, the servos, all that good stuff. So you'll wanna check the pricing if you're putting this up against other competitive brands that are in similar size class. That being said, this thing is really great. Um, it flies so far, this is our third flight, like I said, 6S 5000 30C, you'll get about three and a half minutes and respect the timer. You will be out of power after that. We'll be at about 25 to 30% tops at the end of that flight if you're flying it like I am. So without further ado, we're gonna reset and get going. Okay. All right, final control surface test, and here we go, full throttle. Oh yes, out of the gear. Move the battery back a little bit further on this one. See, they're just getting in. Those gear are slow. Oh, you can see the LEDs so good. Full speed pass right over the house. Oh yes, you can totally see them. Okay, out of the throttle on the way down. Be nice to my battery. High speed pass coming. Here we go. Oh, that looks so gorgeous, guys. So gorgeous. Got a nice little roll there. High G maneuver, just to show you can do it. Out of the throttle. Going into the wind, about 45 degree angle. On my right wing, full throttle here. Going with the wind, it's gonna be a high speed pass. <laughs> that looks so good. Out of the throttle. We're gonna glide around. Full speed pass. Just gliding here. Oh, it looks so good. About 50% throttle here. We'll bring it around. We're gonna go between the house if all goes to plan. I okay. hear humans that are screaming. They're I think clear it's girls. Up on the road. Full throttle. Here we go. You good? Yep. A little fast for between the garage and us. Man, it sounds so good. Minute 56, 54. Man, we're getting things done quick tonight. Well. Oh, that looks so gorgeous, guys. So gorgeous. There we go. That's full elevator deployment there. Okay, these people are gonna be coming up here pretty quick. Okay, here we go, full throttle. Here we go. Out of the throttle, just gliding down. Gear coming out. Let's see how she does. Over the vampire killing zone, sinking. Oh, that would have been a gorgeous landing. Okay, out of the out of the gear. I'm going under the sun here if I do it all right. Over the sun, sorry. Closed one eye like a pirate so I didn't get blinded. <laughs> oh, I want to do a high speed pass so bad, but I'm not gonna. I want to be a good boy and get into a final. Oh, that looks so gorgeous. All right, guys, here come the gear. Camera crew is getting in position. It takes about seven and a half years for them to come down, which is very <laughs> scale, and I love it. You want to be about four steps back, please. Wind is whipping, coming in uh, over the low point there by the vampire killing zone. We're gonna bring in and bleed off the inertia as much as we can. A Little bit more throttle, just get us here. Get us here, baby. Yeah, baby, woo!
Oh my goodness. Okay, well, throttle cuts on. We rolled for a ways. Good thing they're done planting. I uh, scraped my wing protector, which is the right side and left side. Both have plastic on the underside of the rails. So we're gonna see how it looks. We'll come right back. Okay. 26 seconds and counting passed. So we basically ran our timer out by about 10 seconds. That was good. <laughs> While we're walking, I'm just gonna walk over here. ESC status, look at that. That smart pack tells us exactly what our voltages are. 3.8, baby. That's pretty good. That is really good. And by the way, that was scary when I came down here because I had to make two turns and anybody who has flown an F-16 knows that they love to lean over. That was making those turns pretty quick. So that being understood, these are ball bearing mains. The nose is not a ball bearing. And I have, you'll see in the next two videos, been very mean to the nose gear. Uh, stick around for flight number two and flight number three. At the end of flight number three, we're gonna show you how we resolved the problem that we caused, not the plane. <laughs> Throttle cuts on. Control surface test. Everything looks good. And I think we may have salvaged the gear this time. So, Wait. hold that please, camera yep. crew. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yes! Just to show you guys. I just want you to be aware of something. I think I counted nine screws holding the nose gear in. Nine, wow. yeah. okay? This, these are so resilient, but you wanna know what's not, guys? And you're not gonna like this, Horizon. That pin, it bends if you crash. Oh, weird, if you crash. <laughs> Did you hear that? If you crash. If you crash any other F-16 you have, that gear is gonna be broke off, and it's gonna be broke off down there, and it's gonna break your fuse. So you're gonna have to replace the fuse, and you're gonna have to replace the retract, okay? Super happy with these things. I don't know if that was a good landing or not, you get so tied up in the moment with these things that it's almost hard to know. And to be perfectly honest with you, this thing does get hot, by the way, it gets hot. So when you're done, leave the canopy off so it can cool, okay? Just a couple thoughts. Let's taxi this thing and see how it does. It's also same as other F-16s that you've seen in the past. Oh, let's see if we uh, damaged our oh, missiles. Tips. Um, there's a little, you got a little, your tip dirty a little bit. Oh man, I got the tip dirty. Well, I don't know. It about matches. I can live with that. That's not bad though. Not bad. We're going to taxi some. Okay. We are going to do a custom livery on the tail. Okay, so there's our full right. I did notice that it turns a little bit better to the right. Look at that green light. It is so bright. Then it does to the left. That looks so stinking gorgeous, guys. Okay, so let's go back to the other side here, camera crew. I'll show them a left-hand turn here. Look at that, guys. Good left hand. That means we didn't break it for once. I'm so proud of myself. Camera crew, we are evidently slower than this jet. And when yes, I say I jet, I mean EDF, electric ducted fan. Listen to the sound. I know, it sounds really good. That, that uh, like, Hold on, what is that? That is 23% uh, throttle. It sounds so glorious. And by the way, just look how real it looks, guys. This thing is so detailed. Camera crew, go up by the side, I'll trade you. It just looks so good. And yes, the landing gear will forgive pretty much what you throw at it with the exception of if you're going, say, 60 miles an hour <laughs> and you run into a bumpy ground, you're probably not going to come away with undamaged, okay? Yeah. So that being said, I need to ask you guys a favor because we're going to be short on time here. I'm going to make this really short. Check the link in the description. NX-8 has been glorious. NX-6 has been good, too. You can pretty much do this plane on the NX-6, And by the way, if you're wondering. Camera crew, if you can hold this. There is safe select. I haven't even shown it on this plane because it's so awesome. I literally don't have enough time to show it. To flip the switch. If you want to buy this thing, check the link in the description below. It's one of these planes you got to really, you got to hug it because there's like nowhere to hold it. Mm -hmm. This thing is awesome. Definitely cool. Extremely detailed. Almost as detailed as the Draco, but maybe just a, just a scotch below because the Draco is awesome, by the way. If you don't have the Draco, go ahead and get it now. Uh, it's worth the money. It is expensive, but it's awesome. This plane is a level three. Mike. 
Sorry. This plane is a level three in the bind and fly basic, which means it doesn't come with a battery, but it does come with the receiver, AR637TA. But in a level, it's gonna be a level four if you're going for the ARF Plus. I'm gonna tell you from experience, I don't fancy myself a jet expert or an EDF expert. I feel like where I lack, it comes with landing, okay? And it comes with spatial reasons, you may have noticed. That being said, if you have a wide open space, this thing will land okay. Uh, if you have some level of skill, it shouldn't be bad, but it is not a first EDF and it is not a second EDF probably either. It's probably more like a third or fourth. And that is, I'm not, I'm not even including the Habu. The Habu, as far as I'm concerned, is a ready to fly beginner trainer and it is very good, but I wouldn't even qualify that. If you get a Futura by FMS and you put in an Air 637T, or an AR-631 and you set it up as prescribed by our settings, you will love it and it will land at a one third the speed of this plane and it will be more forgiving. Now that being said, the gear on this, the retracts are stronger by a long shot. Mm -hmm. They're stronger, they're not indestructible. Yep. So I will demonstrate in the last video that we share <laughs> exactly how you can destruct them. Mm -hmm. That being said, you'll notice we just flew it. This is our third flight. That means they were so destructed that it took me 10 minutes to fix them. And you'll see that too in the video. All right, guys, we're gonna try to get another one in just because we love you so much. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We got the F-16 Falcon. This is an 80 millimeter, beautiful EDF. This thing is ultra, super, super duper scale. Full disclosure, second flight coming here. We have flown it once. Show you these amazing retracts super super sturdy all three of them have oleos that are functional full metal <clears throat> locking gear notice the light on the on the gear door so, so cool. cool you can't even tell that it's on in the sunlight <laughs> so, so all right cool. going to the end of the driveway okay all right guys here goes nothing Beautiful roll. Gear going up. Do a high speed pass. Holy crap. That is so fast. Our first flight was with ordnance. Rudder over the nose, full speed pass. Because we know that's what everybody wants to see. Man, this thing is zippier, way zippier, with the ordnance off. Mm-hmm. Hey, camera crew, 10 steps back. Good job, right there. Full speed pass again. Thing looks great. Getting lots of wind over our right shoulder now. Let's show you just a nice roll here. Oh yeah, show real quick. That was 75% input. See that red LED there? You can see it full daylight. Well, morning daylight, and it's doing mm -hmm. just fine. Okay, we'll show you a little bit of slower flying here. Out of the throttle altogether. Look how slow that was. <laughs> Except it wasn't at all. <laughs> okay, here we go. Going into the wind this time. We're gonna try to slow it down, do a pretend landing. Obviously, we're not landing. Gear coming out, the gear takes forever. Nice, I like that approach. Okay, 20 steps to the center, please. Gear going up. That's good, right there. Five thousand six S thirty C here, Smart Pack Gen two. Show the non unlimited vertical, but still good juicy power here. Ordnance on this plane is absolutely gorgeous, folks. Okay, I like that landing attempt. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can try one. We may not get it this time, and that's okay. Got to go in right over the vampire killing zone, scarily. Woo! <laughs> Throttle cut 
belt on. That was a fast landing, but I tell you what, it felt good. Mm -hmm. Show the people the bumps as we walk. <laughs> yeah. Big grass chunks. Full disclosure on our first flight, we went off the end of the runway, something similar, except we broke off the nose gear. And the nose gear meaning just the wheel. Mm hmm. Okay, so camera crew, I'm gonna hand you that. Yep, got it. Oh, by the way, 17 seconds left. Telemetry shows us about 30% left on the pack. 8.3.8 uh, on the packs. I'm gonna be nice to this. EDFs are extremely taxing on batteries. Okay. Okay. Looks good. Oh, they look perfect. Oh, no, that is awesome. No grass okay, or anything. Let's, that's so good. Well, the only reason we picked up grass on that first one was just strictly because we had no wheel. Yeah. It was a bumpier spot. That actually looked really good. So you know what we did, though? Hmm. I think we bent that shaft. Mm. That shaft is bent. Now, that could be partly because of our first, our first attempt. Mm -hmm. So the good news is you can pop that snap ring and you can straighten that shaft. So without further ado, that's what we're gonna do. Obviously, we're not gonna show it again. Guys, this plane is awesome. If you wanna save your landing gear, this is a skill level three in the bind and fly basic, and it probably deserves to be a three. So just keep that in mind. It's definitely not a first EDF jet, but it is freaking gorgeous. Look at these. Look at these details here, guys. Look at these antenna. All these different beautiful details. You can see those front lights on the on the gear the red door and the green too and the gear yes. door oh, yeah, those things go. glow That's a lot more so in the nice. twilight we're gonna yeah. try to get a, a darker flight for you look how bright that white light is on top oh yeah and then you'll notice the tail is not decorated there are four different squadrons that come with this plane by the way these come off without tools and it's accessible to get to the edf then no glue no cutting none of that you get to put them on yourself and then you know exactly how they go on, which is nice. That's the way I prefer it, especially on a plane with an EDF, because for whatever reason, I want to be able to get to the EDF, <laughs> the fan. All right, guys. Squadron markers. Squadron Sorry. markers. There's four of them. Yep. They come with it. But Horizon wanted to make this, uh, E-Flight wanted to make this so that you could, you could do your own easily. We are going to do our own, um, and we're going to model this after the 132nd uh, squadron. And that was what was flying out of Des Moines. And it is a gorgeous plane. Very good flying. Three and a half minutes goes super fast though, guys. I'd like to get another video with a bigger pack as soon as we can. I can't guarantee it's gonna be right away because it's just been windy, windy, windy. And this plane does all right. As you could see, that landing was not bad. If I would have been over three degrees, I would have had a lot better shot at it. But you know what? You win some and you lose some. Honestly, I would say this was a victory. Our first one was still a victory, even though we lost the nose gear. Um, stick around, we'll show you that right away after this. And hopefully, if you haven't already, if you want to see the Unbox Build and Radio setup, just go ahead and click on the playlist for this, and then you can follow in and watch that. Uh, we've been trying to split them for you. A lot of people have trouble with the really long videos, and a lot of people love them. So this way, you guys, both, both sides of the equation get it. You can watch the flight, or you can watch the flight, and then the Unbox Build Radio setup. So without further ado, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click into the links below. Uh, follow the links. You'll be helping support our channel to buy this F-16. It's beautiful. Um, you can get yourself an NX-8. And then, of course, I'm going to show you where we got the battery. I did lubricate this with Dawn dish detergent liquid. It worked really good. Mine was sticky. See where that is? About a, I would say about three-eighths to half an inch back. It could go a little bit more and it'd still be gorgeous. Watch how nice this clasp works. You'll notice yours does not work that way before you detergent it up. And yes, that cheater hole is real, which is awesome. There are so many details on this plane, guys. Stick around for the unbox, build, and radio setup. It's not going to follow this. We'll have our second or our first flight, our true maiden, and you can make up your own mind on what happened uh, with the nose gear. But otherwise, the flight was good. So thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We got the F-16 80 millimeter. It's F-16 Falcon by Horizon Hobby E-Flight. We are gonna show you this thing fully loaded today with all the ordnance. You'll notice that we did not pick any squadron 
markings. And look at these amazing retracts, fully aluminum locking on all three fronts. Look at that system. Everything is installed. The only thing you have to put on is the ordinance if you want it. One of the easiest builds we've had in a while. So we're gonna try this out right now. We'll come right back. Rudder trim I had to take care of there. Fifty percent throttle here, eighty millimeter EDF, gorgeously powerful. It's got good power. It doesn't have unlimited ups, that's for sure. But man, it looks good. We're gonna go about ten steps back, please, toward the house. Thank you. That's fine. Full throttle pass. <laughs> oh man, that looks so good. Out of the throttle. Full throttle. Over the trees, this three and a half minutes is going to fly, pun intended. <laughs> I'm at 100% throttle here. Let's try a high G maneuver here. Pulling back on the other air hard, giving a little bit of rudder to keep that nose pointed down. Gen 2 6S 5000 here is what we're flying with. Man, that is so gorgeous and it sounds so realistic. Okay, here we go. Gear coming out. We're going to see what happens. You good? Mm-hmm. That's our practice landing. Looks a little speedy Gonzalez for my taste. Mm-hmm. Man, that looks so good. Full speed pass here. Backing off on the throttle immediately. 10% throttle here. Came off of the critically low warning. Or maybe an ESC warning too for speed and temperature or something like that. Man, those lights are very bright. Not like I'm gonna be flying this at night. This thing's way too fast. <laughs> okay, gear coming out. Trying to go over the vampire killing zone, keep it in the throttle. Those gear take forever to deploy, so be prepared for it. Okay. Throttle cuts on. That was a rough landing, but I was carrying so much speed. Yeah. I said, if I go to this side, I run the risk of going over the driveway. If I go to this side, I run the risk of hitting a big clump of... Okay, so six seconds left. I'm gonna clear that. I run the risk of hitting a big clump of, of grass. Yep. So that's just the reality of the situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and walk to it right now and just full live and in charge and in person here. We're not gonna even pause it. Now, any tricycle jet you fly, and by the way, that thing flies fast. There are no <laughs> flaps, there are no flap runs. Disappointment from me, but you know what? Everybody claims that you can just high alpha it. Maybe not with this ordinance pack. Okay, so nose popped off. Okay. Zero damage. Zero damage, that's good. That's very good. What what got hurt? I don't know. Do what got hurt? Here. Unclip. Let's unclip. 
We have been desperately trying. We are aware of the noises that you've been hearing in our videos. Yes. It's the mic when it rubs my shirt. It's very challenging because of our shotgun style filming. We're trying to improve. Oh. Ooh, that'll happen every time it's tried. Here, wheel. The wheel came off. It's, it's right there. Yep. And then there's the wheel. And there's the wheel. Okay, so I would say that the landing gear don't like to run into clumps at like 60 miles an hour. Yeah. So not a big surprise. Everything else held up okay, but the actual wheel popped off. There's a snap ring here that goes on. Mm -hmm. And that snap ring is what protects it. And then there's a bend in the shaft. So that can be straightened easily. But and I can tell else. you, I can tell you where the wheel is because yeah. I can see it right now. Mm -hmm. Let's show the people at home. I don't really think in good conscience I can blame the airplane for that. That was me. Look how big these clumps are, guys. This yeah. is not exactly the, uh, the Draco here. Okay. One, hey, look, it's 0.75. There you go. There you go. That's the size. Is that all the pieces you think? Well, that's, that's a washer, but there should be a snap ring somewhere too. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to have to pause and look for that. Yeah, that one's going to be the harder one to find. And then, of course, just straightening that shaft, I think, should be no problem. But the thing is, once the wheel pops off, you can see this thing snaps through, and then that's how it makes, mm -hmm. makes your wheel, okay? And then this washer very likely goes on the outside to make up the gap between that. It tracked well. I felt like I was under control as I was careening toward certain death, and I just was watching it in my brain as that happened, as my F-16's life flashed before my eyes, I was, I was imagining it careening and then hopping right into that tree line right there. Oh. That tree line of death and destruction, because I knew mm -hmm. at that point I had committed to the landing. And if I gave it throttle, I'd probably be right, right about the stall point and I could maybe roll. Yeah. But I said, if I did that, then I'm like, okay, well then I gotta come back and try to hit almost perfect again, because I hit just, I don't know, 15 feet, 20 feet past the end of our driveway. Mm -hmm. So if I would have plopped the mains down a little bit harder, I think this would have done it. So the other thing too is I, I, with all the ordnance and everything, I just didn't feel like I had enough to, to go ahead and get that nose up. So maybe the CG needs to go back a little bit. Let's show the people where we're flying. You'll see this in the build, um, unboxed and radio setup, but I'm flying that right here. That gets to CG. From what I can tell, really good. That's a 6S 5000 30C as recommended. It's the middle size. They recommend between uh, 4,000 to 7,000 uh, by by the manual. Mm -hmm. So I would say so far the thing flies great. It's fast. Um, I'm definitely not going to say anemic on power because it wasn't anemic on power, but it's a lot like the F-18 in that you have to give it throttle and it needs power to fly. So it's not going to be doing unlimited vertical. It's not going to be an easy plane to fly. Excuse me for a sec. It's, it's just, it's a fast plane. You need some area to roll out probably. It looks really good in the air. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know, with the ordinance and this light wind we're getting, let's show the people the windsock. Mm -hmm. I would say that the performance today by the ES3X was pretty good. You could definitely see it chattering in the sky as it was going along. That's not uncommon. That was not AS3X jitters. That was fighting the wind, and there is definitely wind this morning. So I would say beyond this, which, you know, can you really blame a plane? Come on, guys. Look how big these bumps are. Yeah. These bumps are big. And so, there's rocks and stuff every once in a while. So I would say, you know, sure, it's a bummer, but, you know, I didn't really expect it to, to fare very well. If I could have somehow lifted the, the nose, those mains are so robust. Um, but then you run the risk of breaking the mount into the plane, and then your fuse is broken. So I almost feel like we lucked out with this damage. So, all right, was, guys. Was the warning battery or ESC? Um, I don't know. Or does it even matter now? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, doesn't look like the battery's down all the way, but it's not sagging right now either. Right. See, we're at 3.7. So I would say, I would say right now, um, the battery timing at three and a half minutes on that flight was about right. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you had dead calm and you had somewhere you could go up and then just glide, you'd be able to get away with a little bit more. But I would say right now, three and a half minutes, I would stick to that timer like glue. It is not going to give you a 20 minute flight like the Draco. <laughs> uh, this plane is awesome. It's very gorgeous. It feels like it's got ample power to get off the ground. I don't know if you guys could tell when I was taking off because I wasn't able to talk. We lose our, our mic range there. 
but I could have rolled probably 10, 15 feet early, which would have been just shy of that turn there. Um, but I felt like I was pushing it, and with a jet, you don't wanna push your takeoff, because if you do and you try to roll before you can roll, there's two things that are gonna happen. You're gonna slow down a bunch, and it's gonna be extremely hard to get air, or you're gonna push that throttle down at the ground, and you're gonna get a little bit of thrust, and you're in ground effect, and as soon as you fall out of ground effect, you're gonna slip out of it and crash. So I felt like I'm just gonna play it safe, I'll go a little bit faster, and then I'll get my air. And you'll notice that it yawed to the right really bad. That was a trim issue. So mm. I trimmed it about minus 18, it looks like right there. So that's a pretty small, that's a pretty small trim actually. So really satisfied with it. I thought maybe at first it was tipping because I had pulled early, but I don't think I did. I think it was just trim because I noticed that the plane kept kind of going this direction mm. and the wind is coming this way. You guys can't, can't tell, but it's going this way. So really happy with this performance, disappointed with myself because I had to, you know, shoot over the runway here. Of course, obviously now I got to get out here and mow this grass to try to avoid that again. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't seen another flight, we may have another one that immediately follows this or immediately before it. But either way, check the link in the description. This is the E-Flight uh, F-16 Falcon. It's an 80 millimeter. It's really cool. It's only a thousand millimeter wingspan. Uh, really well uh, built plane. It's, it's very detailed, more detailed than we're used to seeing. Uh, I, I don't want to quite say Draco-esque, but it's just maybe a, like a, a notch below that because it's very good. And, and we didn't put any of the squadron lo logos on there. They look really cool, but I just couldn't make my mind up and I didn't want to force the issue because I love the way it looks without the squadron logos. So that was one of the thoughts that Horizon had when they went ahead and developed it this way because a lot of people are going to want to do their camo schemes or their, you know, other special libraries of, of uh, aircraft that they've seen all their lives or whatever it is. So that's part of the reason why they left all that stuff off. It's much easier to get out there and paint your plane the way you want. If they don't add a bunch of big dramatic stickers that you have to then peel off and then screw up the gray and it's really hard to match gray. So that was a good call horizon, I think. And by the way, I love it when they look like this because, you mm -hmm. know, let's get down to it. I mean, even though these planes are awesome, they are designed for one thing and that is killing other planes and or ground targets. And they're designed for war. And so there's typically not lots of advertising on them. And so I love the way this looks. It looks very real. It looks mm -hmm. extremely real. If you guys haven't seen an unbox for a while, you may want to watch the unbox. Not sure if it's going to be on the playlist or if it's going to precede this or if it's going to be after this. But the point is we're trying to adjust so that you guys get what you want on YouTube and then YouTube can reward us by us meeting their arbitrary algorithm details. Okay. So we're, we're not doing it necessarily because anybody's asked us to. But if we start doing the flight separate, we're going to make sure that you can watch the unbox pretty much right away. And then the flight will be there and you can do whatever you guys want. If you want to skip the whole unbox, uh, build and radio setup, go for it. Just watch the flights. You can see how it does. We'll give you these, you know, thoughts after the flights. But then you can go back and watch that. Just click on the playlist. We almost always link to the playlist right at the end of the video in the, uh, the screens at the end. So just click on one of those and it'll take you right there or you can always just go to my channel, you click on my face, and then you just look in the search bar, you can type whatever plane you're looking at and it'll come right up for you. So, camera crew, thanks, did a good job. Obviously this plane is awesome, E-Flight, good job. Brian Phillips, bad job, don't run off the runway. <laughs> Signing out for today. Don't forget to check the link, like and subscribe, you'll be helping support our channel. Appreciate you guys, come back for more. All right, YouTube, so we just got done with our main flight here a little bit ago. We had to break away for a minute and we're back. We've got the battery out. So it's kind of standing up the F-16 is and just surveying the damage out in the yard. We were able to uh, recover everything but the snap ring. And so I found it on one of my other crash planes. So worked out nice. I put it on a piece of tape just so it wouldn't get lost. And then of course we've got the wheel um, hub, if you will. I'm not sure exactly what that's called, but it's two halves. So I think it's actually the wheel. And then of course the the tire. So this tire is nice and firm. Um, everything is fine about all these items, but what happened was this got bent up and slightly back in the crash. Now I'm not hundred percent sure if we're going to need to heat this. So I have a torch just in case, but I also noticed in looking close, if you want to show them right here, there is actually a hex. There's a hex there. So if you look really close, that is a hex. 
And guess what? Snap ring, snap ring, snap ring, hex. Now, why is that important? That means that hypothetically, there's a possibility that this is a repairable part if this doesn't work out. Um, absolute worst case scenario, you can replace the entire thing, which is probably gonna be not the most economical proposition should you bend it. Let's show the people how that kind of would be accomplished here. This thing is awkward to flip because there's just nowhere to hang on to. Mm -hmm. But you guys see there's totally serviceable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws and that whole thing comes out. So if you want a camera crew, because my hands are full, just go ahead and wiggle this left, right, up and down, on, the whole focus. thing. See, nothing. It did no. not damage the plane at all. Mm -mm. It just damaged that one just piece, which to be perfectly honest, um, it is a piece. <laughs> right. So, but it's not anything too critical. So that being said, what we're gonna do right now is, we're, and by the way, on my next flight, uh, the ordinance will be pulled off. So I'm not actually super worried about the ordinance right now. So I should have probably taken that off off camera. But my first thing is I just need to brace everything while I try this. So I just have a crescent wrench, nothing fancy about it. And all I want to do is try to bend this, but I'm going to try it and I'm just going to use very extreme caution. I'm going to use a lot of caution and care. I'm going to go slow and I don't want to get to the point where it destroys it or breaks it off. Okay. So I'm actually quite tempted to heat it, but heating aluminum may or may not. This is actually steel. Okay. This I believe is aluminum. This I believe is steel. And then the rest, most of it, I believe is aluminum, but I'm not certain of it. It could be steel. I'm actually gonna take the nose cone off. I don't oh. know if you guys can tell, but it's kind of like right up in my face. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this over here out of the way. And I just wanna see if there's a way for me to get the torch to heat this without damaging any other part of it, okay? So I think the safest way to do it would be to heat it this way. And so I've got all this equipment out of the way. And I basically wanna keep the heat down and away. I suppose I should probably turn on the gas, huh? Okay, so let's camera crew and save. Yep. It's getting red. So as you can see, it's nice and red now, so I need to not touch that. And it's probably gonna be a lot easier to adjust. It's safe up here to touch. It's not heated all the way through. And we're still pretty firm. And I don't wanna damage it, so you could hear the servo move there. So what I'll have to do then in this case is I'll have to brace it here with a second uh, crescent wrench just so it resists the movement. Okay, and then I'm gonna bend it down and away. And just that little extra bit of heat, you wanna show the people from this angle here? Mm -hmm. I'm pulling just down and away. I'm getting as close as I can to where it bent. And this is actually not, not warm at all. That's surprising. And this is good. That's gonna be still pretty hot. Now I'll show them from the front. We got a little bit of upward. We need to bring that down just a hair so it's square. So I'm just gonna come in here this is cool to the touch. I shouldn't say cool to the touch, it's warm, um, but it's not hot like burn me hot. Okay, now you see how I've got that way up inside and I have to kind of hold this down here to get leverage and then pull down just a little teeny bit, okay? So now we've got that squared this way. Got the torch out of the way so it doesn't get knocked funny. And then we're, we need to come just a little bit more this direction. And then I don't know if I'm gonna quench it with, with oil or anything. I think I'm probably just gonna leave uh, well good enough. Did I say that right? Leave well enough alone. There you go, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave that there, that Sometimes, way. Something you're for. 
Okay, so that is, looks like it might actually be just a little bit too far. I gotta go back just a hair. I went a little bit too far forward. So this is where you're gonna get hysteresis in the still and it's gonna break. Camera crew, what's hysteresis? Like memory? Or over, I don't know. You're right, just keep explaining. Well, it's like the memory in the steel. And when you go back and forth, then it's gonna make a weak point, right? Yeah, it could. So now this is, this is pivoted because the servo got moved. See how that moves, mm -hmm. okay? So now this is probably nice and toasty, so I'm gonna just real carefully grab just a kitchen rag that's got a little bit of moisture on it. Yeah, that's, that's cooled. Yep, so it can be touched and handled and no problem. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna verify the squareness, put it up against the straight edge. That looks good. It's so hard to tell, it might be just a hair back, but we're just gonna have to kinda go with it for now until we can see if it doesn't work. So now there's an inside and an outside, and I honestly am not sure which way is which. It looks like the face is the same on either side. So I'm just gonna slip it on there. Yeah, that's gonna spin free enough. So I think in this case, I'll probably go ahead and put the big one on the outside. I don't know if there's a right or a wrong, to be honest. I don't know why it would matter. And then you can put the tire on, and then you can slide the outside of the rim in there. And slip this in. And then I'm just gonna kind of squish that. And then that leaves room for one washer and one snap ring, which we have right here. So we're gonna try the washer first. Of course, that's gonna help with a bearing surface. Okay, so it looks like I need to push real hard just to get that so the snap ring will still fit. See, the snap ring is right there. I'll just snap this around. Snap rings are always fun if you don't have a right tool for them. And there's so many different sizes in the RC stuff. I'm actually gonna use the wrong tool from the job, the wrong tool for the job as typical for Brian Phillips RC. Come on, snap in there, little turd. I'm using this to walk it in. It's not wanting to go. I'm gonna have to get some pliers. Okay. All right guys, so I've just got some needle nose pliers with a nice, uh, fairly blunt tip. That should help me get it started. Okay, just trying to get that lined up carefully. Come on now, it's on, okay. Now I'm just gonna make sure it's all the way on. Yep, it's on. There you have it. So now the wheel is back on where it belongs. Now I'm not 100% certain that that wheel is going to be in perfect alignment. I'm assuming it's pretty close. Um, it, is, it isn't impossible that it's not perfect. Um, in fact, it's pretty probable it's not perfect compared to what we would like to see on a nose wheel because especially on a jet, you gotta be going pretty straight. And you'll notice when I pick that up, look what I did. I bump this. So I got to re-glue that thing, mm -hmm. but no biggie. It just, just pulled out that one spot. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to take the ordinance off now anyway. So I just wanted to show you that was a pretty easy fix. Um, in terms of damage, I'm actually, and, and look, at the, look at the details on these gear door. We didn't point this out in the video, but oh, yeah. look at that. That is so cool. Wow. Even the inside of the gear doors are detailed. Mm -hmm. This plane is really cool. It's got plenty of power. Uh, the F-18 would be, on a scale of anemic, would be more anemic in terms of power than this one. This one is powerful enough to go, but it's not powerful enough for unlimited vertical like the A-10, okay, or near unlimited vertical. So I don't want to be misrepresenting the reality we face, but this plane has plenty of power to do what you want to do with it. So I'm happy with that. Now it's just time for me to spend five or six flights at three and a half minutes a pop, trying to figure out how to fly this thing good. Because this plane, it is fast. And when you land, you either have to stick it when you've got a short runway like we run off of, or you have to have the wind helping you. So I don't know if you guys can tell this, 
but it's extremely windy right now. But show them the windsock. That's why we're not flying right now. Mm -hmm. Because it's just super, super, super windy. So anyway, that's what we get for one day. I think what we're gonna do is we will, oh, and I also wanted to talk to you guys about the squadron, squadron logos. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with four different squadron logos. There's one, two, uh, three, and four, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I actually really like a couple of them, but I grew up, as I mentioned, if you haven't seen it yet in the Unbox build and radio setup, I mentioned that I grew up in Des Moines in central Iowa, and we're still basically in central Iowa, but we're outside of town now. And this is the latest, you can see it says Des Moines, and it says Iowa. This is from the 132nd squadron of F-16s. So this is what I grew up watching. Now, prior to this, they had A-7s, and so it was really cool. I mean, I lived on the south side, and we used to fly, they used to fly right over my house, like the entire time we were growing up. It was so cool. You'd, you'd see four or you'd see six. And so if you were taking a phone call, you'd be like, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. And you could always <laughs> tell if it was the first one, it was going to be like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and you would have, they would have all flown by. Mm -hmm. So it was very loud and very cool. And we had opportunities um, at an older age to see these things really up close and really personal, uh, much closer than you would get at a regular air show. And that was super cool. So I have a special place in my heart for the F-16, and we are really glad that you guys came along for the ride with this one. It's a great plane. If you haven't already bought one or you're thinking about buying one, it's definitely a good plane. Um, is it the best plane that Horizon has ever put out? Um, I probably wouldn't say that. I would say the Draco is still pretty awesome. But that being said, this plane is really good, and it is going to be... Um, let's just say it's going to be commensurate to uh, better than the free wing alternatives. And I say that knowing that free wing makes a good plane. So this, this is pretty cool. I'm very glad to see Horizon go in this direction um, in, in the E-Flight uh, brand. So really happy to see that. And the thing flies great. The one thing I can tell you, they say skill level three and they mean it mm -hmm. because when you go to land this thing, it is the original F-16 that we flew not too long ago, the 70 millimeter, um, had a good power to weight ratio, just like this one has a good power to weight ratio. This is an 80 millimeter, that's a 70 millimeter. But I can tell you this, all the issues I had with the 70 millimeter, just because of the proximity of our tree lines and the runway, I'm having with this one, but it's so much more beautiful. And they both have really good, robust landing gear, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you do have to land it. So don't think you're gonna get this and fly it on safe and be just hunky-dory, because you're probably gonna get one flight out of it, and that's a very expensive three and a half minutes. So, is this a first plane, first jet? Absolutely not. Right. <laughs> is, is it a second, second or third EDF? Probably not. Maybe, yeah, mm. I mean, yeah. But I mean, if you guys are trying to learn and you wanna get here, there are many paths to this plane. Um, I've been flying for six years, I fly a lot, and I am still, I would say that, that, that this one challenges me a little bit on landings, but if I had a big, broad, wide open space, it'd be no problem um, to get in and, and do a nice landing. So that being said, I just wanna give you guys the no BS review. It's a beautiful plane, it's not perfect. It could use more power just like most jets. <laughs> Let's just be honest. There's not a jet I've ever flown that couldn't use more power, with the exception of the A-10, that thing has plenty of power. It is very fast. And then without exception, um, the Habu is a great beginner plane, which is ironic because it's not a very fast plane. But the thing is you just don't need that much power. You can fly on 3S comfortably. This plane, I think the bigger pack is going to help. I also think when I fly this again, which you may have already seen the video, so forgive me if I'm overlapping here, I wanna get the battery back further. Even though we were at the CG, I would like this thing to actually fly tail heavy. And you're like, but that's horrible, Brian. Tail heavy planes fly once. Yeah, 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 yeah. But flying is not the problem. Landing is the problem. So if I can get this thing to land and flare more easily, then it's gonna be better. Yeah. Also, since we reviewed it in our video, this is the S1200 that's beeping at us. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's beeping, but it's beeping. There it goes. So anyway, this thing has been working out great. 
We've liked it so far. We've only used it for a single channel use. Of course, the S2200 is gonna be the better alternative because you get two channels. And to be honest, if you're just trying to stay on budget but you still want Gen 2, this is one way to go. That being said, the better way if you're doing budget decisions would be S2100, still dual channel, but just keep in mind the adapters are not free. You either have to buy the adapters or you have to buy a pack of you know, IC5s. And IC5s are pretty expensive still. So you may keep that in mind when you're making your consideration on budget decisions between chargers. So you may be better off, you may be cheaper to get the S2200 knowing that you wanna charge a variety of batteries than you will be to get the S2100 plus the uh, firmware upgrade cable plus say a couple of those uh, IC3 to IC5s. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind when you're making your considerations. Definitely help us out if you can. Follow the links in the video description. Buy the F16, buy the NX8 or NX10 or the NX6 if you prefer. The NX6 would actually do this plane fine um, unless you wanna do some of the things that we're thinking about doing in the future. Um, I don't wanna make any promises because I can't necessarily guarantee I can get it to work but we have in the past tried flaperons on F-16s. We have been burned on it before to the extent that it didn't really help the flight performance. It actually made it worse. Um, that you can follow along if you want to go back and watch the F-16 70 millimeter and you can learn everything we learned from that video. However, this is a different plane. It's of a different echelon. It's more powerful, it's heavier. And I think the flaperons might be worth investigating. And I wanna show you one reason why that's worth investigating, okay? If you get into the canopy with us, you'll notice that there is a Y cable and it is right here. That is the Y cable for the ailerons. I was disappointed with the mess of wires. If you guys always like it when I give complaints about planes because everybody has real complaints. Here is a Y cable for the ailerons. Why was that cable included? Now I'll tell you why I think that Y cable is included right here because this is the Avian ESC, which is in fact, plugged into the six channel. Now, the reason it's plugged into the six channel is for, I'm not sure why. Then this is the throttle channel, okay? So I don't know if that cable is the cable that goes to the ring for future use with uh, afterburner, hmm. or if that is the second weird cable that I've never actually hooked up on an Avian ESC. I did ask Horizon, I talked to them and got some details from them that the product development team um, was not thrilled with the performance of reverse thrust. So that being said, I don't even know if I'm gonna try it. I may try it just to see if I can get it to work. And if we get it to work and it gives us even an inkling of help because all we need is that last 10% to not go off the runway, then we're gonna be golden. And plus there's nothing cooler than seeing a plane back taxi in my opinion. Um, but that being said, there are so many cheater holes on this. Look, there's cheater holes here, okay, and here. And let's show them underneath and try not to break any more ordnance. Where's all the cheater holes? Point them out, camera crew. Cheater holes, here, cheater here, holes, here, cheater holes, here. cheater holes. Where else? Well, and up here. the main here, inlet. And here. So to, now those ones up front are just for the ESC and stuff, for the ESC and electronics. The reason I point that out to you is because I know a lot of you were screaming at the screen as I rolled off the driveway, and I was screaming at myself as I rolled off the driveway. If you would have had reverse thrust, you wouldn't have gone off the driveway. I don't necessarily agree with that assessment, although it is a thought. So it's definitely worth investigating, so we'll investigate it. If it's a complete uh, waste of time, we may not even share it, because it's probably gonna be a huge waste of time. Otherwise, the product development team at eFlight would have added it in this plane, because it's, all the stuff is here you need. Secondly, flaperons, I don't know if it's gonna help or not, but I still want flaperons and I still want AS3X. Now, I don't really care about safe, and so if I have to give up safe to get flaperons, I am totally willing to do that. But I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Because if you remember, the AR637TA is a semi-lockdown version, and as the newer ones are coming out, they're becoming less locked down, which is good, and that's an improvement. Um, so that being said, that is still a six channel receiver, but you guys know, and I know because of the telemetry, there's extra channels above the six that you can hook up to. 
So it's more like a nine channel receiver, if I remember right. So that means when you do your assignments for gains and things like this, if you have the channels on your transmitter, then you could take advantage of controls on off or gain controls that have been assigned to particular axis of controls through the telemetry side of that, okay? So anyway, I'm not gonna go into all the details here because this video is already long. At this point, I just wanna say good playing, serious consideration, not for everybody because it is definitely a skill level three and they're calling the ARF plus, which is everything but the EDF fan and the ESC, I believe. And receiver. And the receiver, but you do get the retracts, which are awesome on this plane. I mean, you saw how much that, I mean, that would have yeah. destroyed the other F-16. Yeah. It would have broke the frame probably in half. Now I could have fixed it, but it would have been broken half. This took me probably five minutes of picking up parts and five minutes of collecting parts and then 27 minutes of me talking and then 30 seconds of fiddling with the mm -hmm. shaft well, to get right. the job done. Mm -hmm. So that being said, definitely serious consideration for anybody who is a skill level three, whatever that means. Meaning if you know how to fly planes and more particularly landing jets. Um, another thing too to keep in mind as you land this plane, the EDF is peppy, you get power quick. So you can get out of some trouble, but you have to remember the power to weight ratio. I showed this in the unbox build radio setup. I was not able to get a one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio because when I tried to fly it vertical, it was not enough. So you have to keep in mind, not only does it take time to spool up to that level of power, but it also takes time to then respond. And if you're coming in high alpha and you shoot a bunch of thrust that way, you are probably just gonna end up damaging yourself more when you don't quite take off. So, you have to plan ahead about five, not five seconds, maybe three seconds ahead on an EDF that's this weight and power. So when you come in for a landing, you have to commit at some point. So I hope that all helps. You guys make your good decisions because here we're not trying to talk anybody out of any plane. We're trying to talk you into success. And success means sometimes this isn't the plane, it's your next one. Or sometimes that means you need to go back a step and get something that's easier to fly that's gonna build your confidence and skills. Because one and done pilots will destroy this industry faster than anything else, okay? We want people that know how to fly, that enjoy flying, that go home with a plane in one piece. Everybody crashes, but you don't wanna crash a $500 plane. You don't wanna crash a $1,000 investment and, and just be a one and done. That's why I'm not pushing people into the Draco even though it flies easy. Um, it's just not, it's not a good thing to do for us influencers. We should be influencing you to make good decisions, <laughs> decisions that keep you in the hobby so that you can buy more glorious, awesome planes like this because they are good and they're getting better. So keep at it. If you're still, you know, lusting after this gorgeous F-16, trust me, I'm with you. So, and it's been that way for a long time. Mm -hmm. I told my wife I've been wanting this plane pretty time. much since I started flying. Yep. And if, and if I could have got my hands on this when I was a brand new pilot, I probably would have. Yep. And guess what would have happened? I would have been really upset and I probably would have been likely to quit. So resist the urge to splurge unless you're ready. All right, guys, we just got done with our third flight. This will either be the first flight or it's gonna be one of them somewhere. If we crash, it'll be the fourth one. <laughs> 7,000 Gen 2 30C, success. First of all, I put Dawn dish detergent on the shaft of my, my uh, clasp, and that made a big improvement. It works a lot better now. You'll notice that I'm back all the way to here now, okay, with a 5,000, 6S30C as prescribed by the manual. You can go from 4,000 to 7,000. We're gonna try the 7,000, but before I do that, I wanna see how the CG's out, because we would've shown it as being almost tail heavy in this configuration at mm -hmm. that position, okay? So I just wanna test it. Now it's a little bit of wind, and yes, I am testing with the gear down because you're landing with the gear down. And to be perfectly honest with you, the only problem you're gonna have with this plane is when you're landing because it's challenging to land, okay? That feels tail heavy, okay? I'm gonna go back just a hair more. You see where my fingers are? That's where it's balancing out. You see that? I'm another, I'm probably another five millimeters back for my CG, okay? I'm gonna remark that actually probably at some point. Mm. I like being able to flare my planes, okay? That's probably about as far back as you wanna go. Cause if you go any further back, it's gonna be tail heavy. You'll notice it was wiggling a lot. You can actually adjust that too, by the way. Let's check. Clearing the timer now, scrolling down. 
I'm gonna go to forward programming. Did I turn it? Oh, I unplugged it. Forward programming will disappear if you unplug your plane, okay? Let it, let it go through its dance. Okay, there's forward programming. Connecting. Gyro settings. You might have to let it boot. There we go. Save select. It looks like you can mess with the safe select settings, but maybe not the regular settings, or maybe it didn't load. Yeah, it looks like just safe select. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that on its own. We'll come back to that in a minute. And I wanna show you where I put this 7,000. You'll notice I use the third strap to just kind of hang on to the leads. That's my last ditch effort in case this thing wants to pop out. I, I'm not a big fan of putting Velcro on these packs and uh, she's toasty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were not nice to that. Um, difference in size, you'll notice is, is it's not nothing. It's not nothing at all, okay? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're gonna have 2,000 additional milliamps, which of course is gonna be two-fifths more, um, you know, than this. Two-fifths of this more on the 7,000. Camera crew? So I think this one's gonna have to go sideways to really fit properly so we don't hit the top. The canopy, mm -hmm. this is a really forgiving uh, battery tray. It gives you lots of room to work with, which is nice. Jets are always notoriously bad for that. Mm -hmm. um, camera crew knows, cause she's fought with me, or not with me, she's fought through Watched that you. with me. Right. Yeah. With like the Futura, we had to do a bunch of mods, which by the way, it's glorious now. And we had to do that with the Viper Jet, really bad. The F-16, the original F-16 was horrible for that. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna try it just like centered, okay, first, just cause you gotta start somewhere, right? Right. Okay, so I'm gonna get this. I gotta get a little memory in that so I can get that to fold up on me. My strap in the middle was not released, which is a real pain in the neck. So it's glued down. That means I can't adjust it. That, you know, if you're looking for a complaint on this model, that's it so far for me. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a great plane. It's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It flies well. It really does land pretty good if you can get it where you're going without screwing up. And to be honest with you, I, I don't know. Just there's times, you know, as an RC pilot, you just know like where your limit is. And I feel like this plane is, uh, you know, it's not beyond my limit. I can handle it. It's just in the right conditions, it's a lot worse. Meaning when it's extra windy and things like that, it's a lot more scary, but the wind helps slow you down. Mm -hmm. So it's a trade-off in this case for me. Okay, so now that everything is, is working, I'm gonna get these leads so that they're down and away from the canopy. I'm just gonna test something real quick. I wanna make sure that battery stays. Yep, it does. This is gonna be harder on the landing gear. So I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity it should get us a little extra flight time. I just wanna see, I'm guessing I'm gonna be back here at the back of that box, okay? Nope. Okay, I can live with it. We're gonna lay it down and we're gonna go. All right, so we're going on the 7000 6S right now. Final flight controls test. I have it further off the runway to give us more run up because it's a heavier pack. And my camera crew and I are gonna step back a few just in case something goes horribly wrong. Hopefully it doesn't, perfect. Full throttle. Beautiful roll. Gonna play it conservative and get into the throttle there. Oh yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. A little extra weight for a nice windy afternoon. <laughs> that is so fast. Oh my goodness. Yes it is. Okay, you good camera crew? Yep. That's full roll right there. Okay, now we're gonna respect our three minute timer here, but we'll probably just listen for the beeper and then we'll go for it, okay? Or we'll just be really mean to it today. Okay, you good? Straight up. Oh, that looks so cool. And full elevator. 
powering it into a dive. That's a little scary. Yes! I want to do a cornball with it, but I'm smarter than that. <laughs> About 15% throttle, 20% throttle, just keeping it flying. We're just gonna try some slow, slow flight. Now, remember, with wind, you don't wanna get where the wind's pushing you to where your airspeed is zero. Just a relaxing pass there. Boy, it flies a lot heavier with the 7,000, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just, just for grins and giggles, we're gonna throw the gear. Okay, you good, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going into this uh, low point here. Getting into some throttle there. I just wanna see how bad it is to line up. That felt pretty good. Did you feel the wind gusts that went by as I was going by? Jeez, look at that turbulence up there over that tree line. Yeah, the wind's picking up. Okay, here we go. Full throttle, here we go. Man, that looks so good. Oh, by the way, there's an afterburner you can buy. Not yet. And I'm not talking about Guniac. It's available from Verizon. Should be like around 30 bucks or so. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay, full throttle. Here we go. I'm having to ride the elevator chair a little bit here. That's full up elevator there. You'll see it's not exactly pushing the limits of... Uh, Man, that looks so good, guys. Look at that in the sky. You'll notice that we separated the uh, unboxed build and radio setup on this video. So all the maidens. All right, call me a nut job. Did I see vapor around that thing or is that just in my head over those trees? I'm just gonna go with nut job. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm like for serious. What? Did I see it again? I don't know, I'm looking at the camera. Oh, I know, but like, if that's for real, that is the most amazing phenomena I've ever seen in radio controlled. I think it's not in my head. I wanna try it again. Oh, that's our timer. Look at this, watch when it goes here. Do you see that? No. Oh my goodness, I think it's fog or something. That is so stinking cool. We're gonna watch the footage. I'm sorry, I'm going way out there. Okay, gear coming down. We're gonna try this here. Okay, camera crew, I'm gonna try to land it. Okay. That light is so helpful, oh mm -hmm. my goodness. <laughs> Throttle cuts on. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with uh, getting that one to stop today. <laughs> with your shortest landing yet. Oh my goodness, wowzers. The wind is kicking up. That was not the wind. That was me. Oh a man. Extra hey, grass. we found the tire. It's right here. Oh, that's good. That's good. Got the tire both times. Well. Okay, so. Wait, I see, hold on. I see the wheel. It's like we're just making deposits as we go. Here's the wheel. Uh -huh. Here's the okay. other wheel. Okay. Who that washer is gonna be. Well, the washer's not Enjoy. too hard to replace. But let's just keep going back and see what happens. So, all right. I can live with that so far. So far it's not totally destroyed. That was, I was actually, honestly, I was trying to put it down with the mains on the grass. I ran out of elevator. Oh. What, what should have happened is I think I ended up getting it a little bit too nose heavy and I am looking down at the ground just to see if I can find the washer. There's a snap ring that's for sure long gone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious how bad I screwed this plane up. I mean, if it's not totally destroyed, I'd be amazed. Um, throttle cuts on. Up, I see an antenna. That looks pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah, I know, but look. Oh. oh that's so sad. From It where? goes over here. Where is it? Where does that go? It goes on, well, what the heck? I think it goes here somewhere. Where does it go? Oh, the tip, I broke my tip off. Oh, man. Oh, I hate it when I do that. I'm gonna have to pick it up here. Here. I can... Okay. Yeah. It's the pieces, guys. Oh, this is gonna be so painful to look at. I'm like, I don't even wanna do it. I don't even wanna do it. The missile, the you missiles. You didn't break the missiles. Not yet, but I probably did actually. See this? I'm gonna slide that missile rail off. Off, okay, so missile and missile rail, okay? 
They're not broken. Oh, that's so awesome that I didn't destroy the missiles. Who wants to fly around a plane with broken missiles? That might need to get re-glued there, okay? Just a little bit of grass there, okay? So this, the factory recommends that you leave these on, even if you fly without ordnance, for tip protection. And there is a right side and a left side yep. because they have plastic, plastic on, the, on the bottom. Hey, there's the tip. Do you see it? Oh yeah, I see it. Balls. Wait. What the heck there's, is that? I don't know, I was looking at that too. You know what, that's like the inside of like a, no, it's a, one of those Nerf things. Oh, okay. There's the tip. Okay, Okay. thank you. Thanks for your balls. Don't balls in the you. tip. Got the whole, got the whole package there, right? Great. Okay, so let's slide this off. Yep, that came off okay. The missile comes off the rail okay. Guys, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I'm trying not to look at the nose gear. <laughs> You're turn, not turning I, it over. I'm intentionally not turning it over because I'm scared of how bad it's going to be. Oh, there's where the antenna goes, right there under your finger. That's yeah. it. That's not bad. Are you freaking kidding me? That's. Okay, hold on. This is good. Oh man, those landing gear are so good. That's crazy. Holy cow. I can't believe how good that is. Who it turned the grass? servo. Is that what it did? Look, it just slipped back into the shaft. So I need to loosen that. Are you freaking kidding me? This didn't even break. That is, that is unheard of. Did you just see that thing? Yeah, I, so I said, who lands a jet in the grass? All right, this is the test. You gotta be kidding me. That is incredible, guys, incredible. I can fix that. I've already done it. And then this, I just have to undo that set screw and then this slides forward and it's done. That squares up the gear. Wow. I cannot believe after that landing. This thing can be glued in with some China glue and it'll be done in like three minutes. Yeah. Now my tip is probably gone forever. So I think I'm gonna have to probably, is that metal? I think it's metal. Um, that is just incredible, guys. Plastic. This thing is a resilient. <sighs> this thing is a resilient plane. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was crazy. Okay, we're gonna pause and come right back. All right, guys. So we're gonna make this thing like it never happened, except <laughs> that everybody saw it. So first things first, we're gonna glue this in so the China glue can set up. This is just China glue because it comes from a Chinese model, and it's the easiest way to describe it. That's what I've been calling it for years and it's been very effective. Okay, there's a little bit of grass and stuff in there. I should probably go ahead and take that out if it sticks. Okay, so we're just gonna get in here. There's a little bit of crushing around there, which is unfortunate, but uh, no soup for you. And then this is the part that broke off. So it's just gonna go right back in here, of course. So a little bit of mar. You'll never know from 100 miles away. 100 miles an hour away from 10 feet. Isn't that the test they say? I don't think it's quite that. Oh, it's not 100 miles away yeah. from 10 feet? I guess okay. six feet. Six feet, geez. And most people look pretty good from six feet. I mean, planes. Planes, okay. So we've got uh, a little bit of China glue there, and we're just gonna go ahead and slather, slather that. Look how bright those LEDs are. I know. It's so good. It's like lighting up your work here. Yep, that's right. Handy. Okay, so we're just get a little bit more glue on there. Try to pull out a couple of those sticks if they'll come out. That stuff, I got a little bit on the edge there. Just pushing that forward, All right? Simple stuff. So we're gonna let that bake for a second or cook. Then this tip, this is gonna be as simple as just a little bit of CA. So CA, again, from China. This is just leftovers from a Dynam. So got one drip there that one drip, and then we have kicker here so that when we get it in position, we'll touch it with the... Uh... Okay. Except I don't wanna do that. I wanna soak up this extra drip. Okay, so that extra drip is gonna go away. And we're just gonna set it with the kicker. So if you guys don't have kicker and you're opposed to getting it, please do yourself a favor and get it immediately because mm -hmm. you will use kicker 
more than virtually any other item in your whole repair kit. Yeah. And I mean, I know from experience, I crash all the time. I say that only, I'm serious. Like I just, I crash all the time, guys. It's just part of it. When you fly a lot, you're gonna crash when you're a newer pilot, okay? And if you're ashamed of your crashes, then learn from them so you don't have to repeat it. And of course I have just maybe not done that very good. Okay, so then pull this out, let the glue get stringy. See how it gets stringy? Then it'll stick almost permanently. I'm just gonna take off this here, just to get that out. Ooh, looks like our magnet was yeah. popping. So good thing we noticed that. I'm gonna use on this, I'm gonna go China glue for that, not CA, okay? China glue could be a little bit dangerous because it takes up a little bit more thickness. Okay, so we're just gonna slather that there and we're gonna slather it here and we're gonna let that sit. We're not even gonna touch it, okay? We're just gonna leave it, okay? We're gonna leave it, okay? This is set, it's good. Now we're gonna put the tip back on. Okay, so watch this, guys. I'm just, I didn't even break the whole tip off of the CA bottle, because when I squish it, it gets me more precision, okay? It's got just a little teeny tiny bit of CA there. And then you can kind of spin it around and get in the perfect position, like so. Whenever you like it, then you can set it. Okay. And remember, this is gonna be just like it never happened except that everybody saw it happen, mm -hmm. okay? So that's one of the uh, wonderful parts of doing this on YouTube is that all of your mistakes get to be shared with the entire world, which is awesome. The rest of time until the end of time. Now, that being said, we're probably gonna have to show, okay, this flight at the very end. Okay. So now I'm just pushing that into place and we're just gonna leave that. See how there's nothing on the face of it. And then look at this. See, it's very strong now, same thing here. Got a little bit of paint scraped off of there when we viciously landed into the ground, okay? Now, I'm gonna take and just do one additional thing here. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna go one or two drips here. And I'm just gonna drip that all the way along the tip, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of paint it on, on this spot. Now, why am I doing that, camera crew? Added strength. Yep, pretty much. That's all there is to it. It's not rocket science. You don't want this thing to fly off, but you also don't want it to, it's gonna spread the paint a little bit too sometimes, depending on what type of paint they used. See. Okay, so now we're gonna let that drip downward. Okay, because it's just CA, right? We're just gonna touch that cotton. And that's just gonna, the little bit of moisture from your breath will actually set that too. So you're not necessarily going to kicker it. I'm going to kicker it oh, too. You are. I'm just going to run it along the side like this, just to guarantee, because the kicker will make it set in uneven ways. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, guys, look at it smoking. You see it smoking? That is so cool. Now, call me crazy, but when that F-16 was out over the tree line, there was vapor around it. And I don't know how that is. I didn't think that would happen unless you had like a plane with something going on, but I swear I saw it. So we're gonna look at the footage. And if that happened, that is the coolest phenomenon I have ever seen in radio controlled. And I've seen a lot of cool things. <laughs> so that is, that is really cool if that just happened. It may have been totally in my head though. And I'm kind of leaning toward it, it's totally in my head. Or maybe it didn't pick up on camera. If that yeah, happened, okay. So this antenna is good. It feels like it wants to kind of rip out still a little bit. So I'm actually gonna intentionally take that out now and I'm just gonna go a little bit heavier on glue because I don't want that to be fighting me all the time. Okay, so that's pretty heavy. And then I'm gonna goop, I'm gonna goop, and I'm gonna goop, and I'm just gonna spread it into all those surfaces. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. Sometimes when you've got a break like this, it'll actually pull the material and crush it. And I think that's what happened is I crushed the material just a little bit. So you're not getting as tight of like Not a as tight of a bite because there's not material there to push into one another. 
So what I want to do is I want to build up this glue a little bit thicker and then I, I just basically want to let it cook off. Okay, now when I say cook off, I mean sit and cook, chemically react with the air, okay? So I'm just gonna let that sit. Now, let's go on to the important part, which is the landing gears. Normally I don't fix, oh, that's not true. You have to fix one of the missiles had what appeared to be an issue, okay? Was it this one? Yeah. See how that's wanting to break in half, okay? So a couple different ways we can handle that. I'm actually not sure if that is gonna break or if I'm gonna, you know, like if it's just got a bend in it or if it's just kind of sloppy. It looks like it's gonna break, but it's really kind of hard to tell. Can you drip? Feels like it's stronger this way. Yeah, drip CA. Yeah. This might not be foam safe and we'll find out. And I will sacrifice my plane for you. It should be. Should be fine. I cannot have you block on this step here, camera crew. Just getting it into the crack. Now this is an unseen spot, so it's not gonna be anything too fancy if you get a little bit of damage there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna moisture from my breath to set it. You can tell when it's set because it stops smelling. And I'm not saying to sit here and hop the glue. I am saying that you can tell when it stops smelling that it's been activated and it is done chemically reacting, okay? Maybe it's just kind of a bendy thing. I don't know. Or maybe it's also broke a little bit there. I can't tell. Let's just go a little bit of glue in that one too. See, I'm just gluing into this hole. Just give it a couple of drips. And then I'm going to compress and retract this like this. Okay, now I'm gonna take kicker to it because I don't feel like it's setting up quick enough because I'm impatient. Okay, that's also incidentally where you're going to extremely fastly melt your foam. If you use kicker with CA, it makes the chemical reaction faster, which produces more heat, which is why many times you'll see steam coming off. Okay, so let's see how this feels now. To be honest, I just don't, I just don't know. It doesn't, I don't feel like it's for sure broken. Is the other one that bendy? <sighs> That's a good test we could run. I'm just surprised how well these things held up. There was a yeah. lot of grass in there. You know what? See, it is kind of bendy still. Yeah, but we kind of forced grass into both sides too. I don't know, I've been, really impressed with this plane. It is really good and it just kills me. Okay, we gotta get that in or it's not gonna go. Yeah. By the way, if you let your glue cook off too much, all you have to do is just add a little bit of glue on the outside and it should let you in the hole. See how nice that went in? No problems at all. Okay, now you see how there's a little crushing here? If you're concerned or if you have worse crushing, you can take hot water and you can take that out, but it may dimple so you have to be prepared to flatten out the foam because it's gonna relieve those balls of foam. And when your balls get big like that, you know, you may have to smooth, you may have to rub them. Okay. So that looks good. I'm satisfied with that. This was not perfect, by the way. That had a little bit of crushing when it was brand new. Okay. Um, it's probably worse now, but it, <laughs> it definitely had a little bit before. Yes. All right. So just to be clear, I don't think that's any worse than the other side. And I wanna just let that sit <laughs> so we don't have that break, okay? Obviously the tip is fixed, the missile's fixed, the missile rail wasn't broken at all, was it? No. Nope, it's good, it's solid. Now, this is the important and critical mechanical part that we have to fix. It's very easy, the only thing that we have to fix is twofold. We need to get the wheel back on there, obviously. I need to use a two millimeter, two millimeter, oh wait, that's a 1.5. My apologies, 1.5 millimeter to adjust this, why don't you show them from here? Okay, so we're gonna loosen that, and then look, that'll allow this to come back to where it belongs. Jeez, that thing is so bright, it's yeah, incredible. It then I'm just gonna tighten that back down, okay? And everything looks otherwise okay there. That's great, I'm just gonna make sure this all is gonna be free, because sometimes that'll bind up your gear if that doesn't move on there free. So this didn't bend. It just pushed the rod back through. This is where we're gonna be, that's a pretty good bend, okay? So this still actuates just fine. Now, 
I think we can do the same thing we did earlier. Now you guys haven't necessarily seen it or you may have seen the more, the lesser minor repairs. And so we're just gonna have to, unfortunately on this one, we're just gonna probably throw a caution to the wind. Okay, so I'm gonna brace it here. And I need to get low enough so that I can get this tool, two crescent wrenches. Okay, and I'm just gonna, this could break. I'm mentally prepared for if it breaks to not cry on camera. That is steel, you could heat it. I don't think it's totally necessary, to be honest. It seems like it's pretty soft. Mine's extra, extra soft, as in broke. Did it, did it. Yeah, it's broke. So now I have to figure out if I can replace just that component or if I can do a different component altogether. Okay, so I'm gonna brace this. You saw how far back I bent that though, right, camera crew? Are you, are you sure it's broken? Um, <sighs> mm, honestly, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it cracked. Show them from here, from this angle. Right here. You're gonna have to get way up in there. Somewhere. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. Look away. Try it now. I think there's a hairline crack right there. Mm. On the bottom part right there. So mm. if that's the case, then we're probably screwed until we get that thing because I believe that's press fit in there. And if it's press fit in there, it's done, which sucks because that means I either have to replace this whole assembly or I have to replace just this portion because there's a snap ring here, snap ring here, and a snap ring here. There's a set here. That set can be taken out and then this whole assembly can be taken apart. So depending on what's available, I may be able to still correct it. Now, in this case, the other thing too is suppose I try to, yep, see, I told you it was broke off. Okay. Yep. I knew it was broke. I just didn't know how bad. So you can see that guys. Yeah, that was definitely broke. Are you focused? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could tell it was broke. So unless I take that out and just come up with a new um, piece that I could stick through there, you know, a shaft, but then this snap ring, that got yanked off. Mm -hmm. And then obviously beyond that, these two wheel pieces, the wheel halves, you put on one half, it goes to the back. You put the tire on, you put the other wheel half, it's, it squishes together and then you have your assembly. And then of course there'd be a washer and then a snap ring that would go into this side here. And then that holds everything together. So it's possible that with some effort, I can come up with a solution for that. But for now, I'm kind of thinking that it's not impossible that I bent this shaft as well a little bit because it looks like from this angle here, camera crew, you come right right there see how this shaft is kind of at an angle now mm -hmm. i mean was it more see, straight up now? i think it might have been totally straight because yeah that's i mean it still definitely works but just look how robust everything I is i mean i cannot believe it's how amazing. rough that was so yeah i think we're just gonna have to see if we can replace just that single component i don't know that we can Guys, this is an awesome airplane. It is worth fixing, so I'll be fixing it. And as you can see, everything else is pretty much done. Mm -hmm. it's, it's back to 100% as far as I can tell. That's dry, I always test that before you put ordnance back on. So that's gonna slip back on there. And just to be clear, let's show you the actuation of the steerable nose gear. No problem there at all, looks totally good. Beautiful, elevators are working, ailerons are working. And then just to be clear, we'll go ahead and reactuate the landing gear retracts. Everything looks good, guys. It's golden. That was light. So cool. So, all right. You win some, you lose some, guys. I, I just wanna say right now, thanks for sticking around, watching. Um, obviously, we got this thing back into pretty good shape. 
Uh, given the nature of that last landing, this is now set up and I think that's good. So I think we're good to go to put this on. So that'll hold on itself. And then obviously when we pull this, the magnet won't. Yeah, the magnet did try to pull out. So we're gonna let that dry a little bit longer and just make sure that doesn't pop. Oh, that's actually the bottom one, right? No, that was the one you did. Oh, that's right, down. it was upside down, true. Yeah. So it uh, looks like we're finally getting our not charged for flying warning. <laughs> which is okay because we're not getting ready to fly at this point. It's pretty much done deal. But I mean, in the right spot, I could make this work. So I'm going to fix this real quick. If you guys get this warning, battery not charged for flying. So you can cancel out of that. And I'm not sure if, if you go to just the main screen, if it'll stop it from going. But either way, I'm not really worried about it for flying. I just don't wanna to listen to the alarm. Um, this plane's great. It's definitely a level three or four, depending on how you buy it. Um, what happened here was just basically a short runway. I mean, I just, I just pretty much landed early. So that could happen to anybody, but look how sturdy this thing is. I think this will probably be uh, at the very, very end. So if you're still watching, if you haven't decided how great this plane is, it's very good. I would highly recommend it. Definitely check the links in the description below. Hopefully you have better luck than me. The 7,000 milliamp hour um, obviously needs to go uh, back a little bit. I was a little bit too nose heavy on this flight. So if you wanna move that back another quarter inch or half an inch, you're gonna be able to flare just fine. And I should have known it when I was coming in and it was going like 100 miles an hour at idle. <laughs> and I was having to ride the elevator with like 15 to 20%. That would have been a good time to say, let's go ahead and walk out to the road and take the long landing strip. Um, but I just couldn't resist. You guys know I'm a glutton for punishment. So without further ado, come back for more guys. We're really excited. We're getting really close to 100,000 subscribers. We couldn't have done it without you. So thank you very much for being part of this uh, group. And uh, we have so much more coming. We don't even know where to start. So please stay tuned. Click the bell for notifications if you aren't getting notifications and definitely check the links, you'll be supporting us. That's probably the number one way you can do it between watching videos, liking, subscribing, click the bell for notifications, and when you're gonna buy a plane, buy it from our links. And if you don't like this plane, you like something else, we have other links below, and you can always shoot me a comment. We try to reply to 100% of the comments. It doesn't always happen immediately, but we try our best, and we really appreciate you guys because you're the reason that we have the channel, and we don't wanna forget that as we get bigger. So come back for more. All right, YouTube. So just in studying this fixture a little bit better, this piece is press fit. And so if I can get that to come out, this is my plan. RTL fasteners had sent us these kits the other day. And so they've been proving very handy today. And so what I did was I, I found a number three metric. It's three by 30 with a socket hex cap screw here's the product number and then what I did was I used from the same metric kit this is all from the metric kit this is the kit number 743 rtlfasteners.com okay there's a coupon code if you use it from below and this shows the washer m3 flat washer 50 pieces so I used two of those one on each side to flank that so it can spin free. I've got this double nutted here. It's not torqued down yet. And then I have one nylock out here. So the nylock also comes in this kit. It's a number three nylock. So meaning a metric number three. And that's the part. So it comes with a bunch of those. It comes with 50 in this kit. Uh, this kit also came with some screwdrivers here, but I'm not using those ones necessarily right now. I suppose we could check. This is, this might be the right size actually. That's 2.5 millimeters, so it's too big. This one here is two. And then this one is 1.5, which incidentally, that's the size 
that we need to take this out, which is my next step so I can get in there and try to take out the press fit fittings and things. Okay, I believe that's 1.5 meter millimeters. I'm not 100% sure though. I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit. That is the size to adjust the servo horn, if I recall, right here, which is pretty cool. So yeah, so if you end up getting that kit from RTL Fasteners, then it'll have this. I happen to have one as well, this style, and that's uh, 1.5 millimeters as well. So guys, we'll uh, give you a quick update on that uh, if it works out as expected, because as you know, we ended up breaking it off. It didn't break in the landing, but it broke when I tried to straighten it, unfortunately. And this is steel, so it's pretty strong, but uh, I don't know if this is gonna be quite as strong. Okay, so real quick update. We pulled this apart here at the oleo, really easy. Just a word of warning, when you do get that pushed back, it likes to lift out, okay, like this. So there's a small snap ring, real small snap ring, that's on the end. I told you that there was a snap ring on this pin here. You can see where that little sleeve is, right in the middle there. And that's the first thing you undo. Now, I'm not even concerned necessarily with taking this whole thing apart here, so I guess I wouldn't have had to even loosen that screw there. So my next step is to press this out, and I'm gonna tell you how I did it after I get it out. All right, folks, so I was able to take out, almost take out that shaft. Luckily, it fought me so much that I was able to just drill and tap it. And then I took the RTL fasteners M3, and then I found some smaller ones that worked out really nice. And then of course this hardware came out of this part here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually disassemble this. I've got the bolt with a number, that's a two millimeter drive, hex drive. Then I have another washer, then I have a regular standard nut, and then I have a spring washer. And the thing that's cool is when this is going down the runway, it's gonna be going like this. So I'm just gonna simulate that. So going like this. So it's not gonna loosen any of that hardware as it spins forward. Now, if you spun backward at a high rate of speed, it could potentially back it off, but I doubt it's gonna back it off. And secondly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this apart and then I'm gonna put some CA, just run of the mill crappy Chinese CA, whatever this is that came with the Dynam. And I'm gonna just put that onto the threads and that's gonna lock everything together. And then that's gonna get me out of hot water and I can put this all back together. See the spring there? I was gonna show you that. It's got some grease on it. And then this is gonna go back in here and everything gets reassembled and then she's flyable again. So we'll show you when it's all put together and done. So excited. And plus this is even more serviceable than it had been because I can replace that screw now. We'll of course show it flying too. All right, we'll come back in a minute. All right guys, so this is, this is the finished product. We've got, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see the glue. If you wanna give them a really close up shot here, there's some glue here. So you see that clear? And I also put it along the threads and then I jammed this nut here with my little small set here and I torqued that down super tight. So it spins free. The only thing I'm kind of kicking myself is it would have been nice to put a little bit of pressure and then slow this wheel down. The problem is as soon as you slow this wheel down, you're gonna basically just flatten it. It's just gonna scrape along the ground, which would slow you down, but it's gonna wear it out in like one sitting. So if you can, you can see I can't torque that anymore, okay? You guys see how my hand turns white? That's how you know I'm torquing it to the point where it's gonna break off the screwdriver. So that thing is solid now. And however strong that uh, three millimeter, I believe it was stainless steel, so hopefully that's not worse than a black anonized or black anonized um, number three would be compared to this, which I believe is steel. It's not stainless that I can tell. We heated that the first time. Probably should have heated it this time and it wouldn't have broke. Although I'm sure it was weakened. And then we ended up losing one of the nuts. 
uh, not losing, but just not using. And then one of the nylocks. I didn't want a nylock on here if I could avoid it because I figured with heat it was going to melt. And then you'd lose your locking function. So we used, instead, we used this. RTL fasteners to the rescue again here. So it's an M3 lock washer that looks like this, of course. So it's like a split washer. So then as you torque it down, it just bites just like any other lock washer. Okay? But very, very small, of course. And that all came from the metric kit 743, including um, these tools. But then I ended up using my number two, two millimeter, which does this have a two millimeter? This has a 2.5. It has a two, so yeah, technically you could have used the drivers that were in this set too. Okay, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna put this back in here, so we're just gonna show right here. Okay. See, this spring is gonna wanna shoot everything out, okay? So that's gonna go just like that. It's gonna go up and down. And then that's going to lock it in, the oleo, okay? So now I need to just get this pin. This pin is super dinky, okay? So don't shoot it across the room. Of course, it's going to come in from this side first. I'm going to just slide it in loose. And then just push everything together. This is why the camera crew is holding the camera. Okay, push it all the way through. Um, I'm going to have to probably do that with pliers. So I'm just going to grab and push that through just so it pops in. The alignment has to be just so for this to work. There it goes. Okay, so now we're through. Far enough to get the snap ring back on. And the snap ring is huge. Look how huge it is. Mm, very. Super huge. So this is where the, you're going to drop that. So don't do that. Pushing it on just with my thumb, which hurts. And then I'm going to slip my thumb back. Okay, so that's not on there. It's just sitting on there loose. You guys see what I'm talking about? It's loose. Then I'm going to take this and pull it down. Okay, so you heard the pop. Sorry, camera crew. I feel like a dentist when I do this, except a dentist would be even smaller crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she lives to see another day. Okay, so then just real quick. Okay, we have the, the nose comb. That actually looks nicer than it did before. It's a miracle. And then when we close the landing gear, then we should be able to verify everything clears because it is tight in there. So we're gonna do that next. All right, guys, so we've got it energized and this is after our little repair. As you can see, everything is looking pretty kosher here in terms of the angles and everything. Just to be clear, there is a little bit of play on this wheel in general but there's a little bit of an angle down now. I'm looking for clearance, rotor movement, and we're good. One more shot here. Sweet. So she's fixed from what I can tell. And the only thing I need to be careful about now is just, and like even this turned out really nice. That was super easy. Just basically got glue holding it together, see it? And then this thing, that's probably the most noticeable damage I would say from the whole endeavor. Got that one little teeny spot right there, which is obviously not ideal <laughs> even this antenna was broken 
So we did super, super good on that crash. Okay, here goes the gear again. One more look. It's so awesome. Just loving it. Okay, speaking of loving it. We're going to close out with shameless kitten views. Hi, guys. You just hanging out together? You're so cute. Try to wake you. You wake me. All right, guys, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Come back for more. Brian Phillips signing out. Thanks for watching. More to come. If you haven't already seen the unbox, it's in the playlist for the F-16. You can watch it right now. If you're watching this, this is the end of the maiden flights, even though we have that little repair at the end. We'll see how this screw holds up. If this screw goes kaput, then we'll just probably have to come up with a better system. And I have not ruled out the possibility of trying to make this oleo go all the way around. Because I think I can make it clear when it closes. That is some awesome landing gear. I cannot believe I didn't destroy this stuff. Good job, Horizon. Good job, E-Flight. Good night, guys.